So the more salient question is, what is it about our democratic institutions that have let 70 million people be so bitterly disappointed who have not received the fruits of democracy and the fruits of all this fine high talk? Mm. And unless we're looking at that, we're not looking at the reason those guys became Trump's foot soldiers. But I'll just run my Stations of the Cross just to remind you. Yeah, yeah. Ronald Reagan becomes president. He fires 11,000 striking Union air traffic controllers. He calls government the enemy. He declares war on the National Labor Relations Board. They open up right to work states and they weaken the wealth producing mechanism of the middle class. Jimmy Carter's Fed chair raises interest rates five points in a single day to fight inflation and bankrupts hundreds of thousands of small family farms in the Midwest. Their land is bought up by big agribusiness. Those people go to the city or they wind up as serfs. Uh, Earl Butts, Nixon's uh, head of agriculture, told those farmers, forget your grandparents' warning, go into debt, buy big machinery, you'll be preserved by the rising land values. You don't have to worry. He was wrong. The savings and loan crisis, which came from banking deregulation, took $250 billion out of personal savings accounts and pensions. Five people went to jail. Savings and loan officers were borrowing their clients' money as their own loans. GATT and NAFTA, shipped millions and millions of jobs overseas to countries where they didn't have environmental, labor, health and safety standards to raise prices. They knew they were gonna put workers out of work and every other industrialized country in the world retrained their workers. We spent less than any other industrialized country and we gave our guys the opioid epidemic and the crystal meth epidemic. That's GATT and NAFTA. Then Clinton comes in Clinton, Robert Rubin, and Larry Summers, and they shift the, D the Democratic Party into neoliberalism. And neoliberalism is a philosophy designed to protect markets from any government intervention. That means government cannot intrude for social reasons or health reasons or environmental reasons. They cannot control markets. And what resulted from that, the ending of Glass-Steagall, which was the law that made it illegal for banks and insurance companies to speculate with your money, and the Financial Modernization Act, which made it illegal to regulate credit default swaps, was the crash of 2008, mm. which Obama paid the tab for. Clinton took his hundred million and put it into his library, and he got away scot-free like a great elder statesman. And every year the Republicans come in, they spend the, the country into bankruptcy and debt. The Democrats have to come in and fix it. And it was Reagan who called that taking the toys away from the kindergartners. Right. And what he meant was you spend enough debt, there's no money available on social services, welfare, Medicare, daycare, so mothers can work, you know, good roads, internet in the country. You closed a lot of mental health hospitals. Yeah. I was working in California when that happened. Mm. Uh, they closed the big holding tanks, the mental hospitals, and the plan was to open up little neighborhood centers with five and 10 patients so they could be supervised and get their meds. But NIMBY took over and people didn't want it in their neighborhoods. So nothing happened. Right. So nobody was supervising these guys not taking their meds. So I'm almost done. So my point is both parties have betrayed urban and rural, non-college educated people for 50 years. And that to me is where the rage comes from. That's why people are shitting in the White House. They don't shit in the White House because they love Trump. They shit to register their disgust on a system which yeah. has abandoned them.